Welcome to Wild Pitches, the Smokies podcast, and we got a great giveaway that might put you to sleep, but in a good way. Let's get this thing started. All right, there he is, Eris Theophanopoulos from Greece. I'm Mick Gillespie at Eris M. Theo at Broadcaster Mick. And we appreciate you guys hanging out with us on the Smokies podcast. It's called Wild Pitches. And uh, the feedback's been great as we get closer and closer to opening day. And um, and you're getting closer and closer to uh, having to put on a lot of events. That's the truth. So as you know, guys, you've been following us here on social media. Uh, we have announced a couple of different things uh, since we last spoke. And one of that things being that our Fan Fest and our 5K is taking place on March 30th this season. So we're going to have our Fan Fest, something that we do every single year uh, before the season, obviously kind of like the kickoff to the year. And uh, that will be taking place on March 30th, but we're adding something. Before that, we're going to be doing our 5K. The Smoky Shot 5K is back again, benefiting our friends at Remote Area Medical. So it's kind of a dual date, a lot going on at the ballpark. So the 5K is going to begin at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, and how the 5K will work is we'll begin right here at Smoky Stadium. You'll be running around the community that is around the ballpark here, very lush with trees and the houses, the wonderful, safe communities around here. And then you'll enter the stadium once more, go around the outfield, left field to right field, first base, second base, third base, and then the finish line is crossing home plate. That's super cool. We'll be doing that on March 30th right here at Smoky Stadium. You can sign up at SmokiesBaseball.com slash 5K. And then at 11, it's going to be our Fan Fest, our Fandemonium from 11 to 2. We'll be doing behind-the-scene tours of the ballpark. You can see where Wild Pitches takes place. You can oh, see wow. the booth where Mick calls the games. You can see the press box. You can see the locker room. You can see the visiting locker room. You can see the batting cages. It's all right here at Smoky Stadium. You can take tours. You can swing in the batting cages, try out some of the new foods that we're having here at the stadium. We're going to see Homer Hound. The Easter Bunny will be there. There's a lot going on at Smoky Stadium for our Fan Fest. And, of course, you can go down onto the field, play catch, take a few photos with your friends and family. And it's absolutely free. Fan Fest, Fandemonium. March 30th, Smoky Stadium from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Join us. Why wouldn't you, right? Yeah, last year we did the podcast from FanFest. That is that correct. Again. That is correct. And I might say that, you know, we will have the uh, debut of one of our big projects that we've been working on over the weekend or over the, uh, the off season here. Uh, a big. Is it what I'm thinking of? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, that is exciting right there. I think I think that'll be a great uh great. place to have that uh, oh, yeah. uh shown to our fans. Think about this. Like you you talk about how exciting everything's been lately. That's the only hint I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 remember how exciting things have been lately, right? It's gonna be real great. It's gonna um, be real great. Well, that's cool. And, and if have you been following us here on social media as well, you know that we are revealing a giveaway item today right here on Wild Pitches. It's for a brand new theme night coming to Smoky Stadium. Boom. We are doing our halfway to Halloween night on May 18th, and we are going to have this pillowcase giveaway to the first 500 kids in attendance you're asking why a pillowcase well at least how i did it maybe mick did it back in the day on halloween you didn't have a big old plastic bag or something you brought your pillowcase out mm -hmm. and got it filled with your favorite chocolates and your favorite candies so we're doing a little throwback and homage to that with this pillowcase giveaway, it has our Smoky Bear logo in the center. But of course, it's halfway to Halloween, so he's dressed up as a mummy. <laughs> it's brought to you by our friends at Hampton Inn and Suites. What do you think about that, Mick? I love it. Like it looks fantastic. Um, I 
I, I know the last time we did pillowcases once before, and then I had like, uh, they were my son's bed forever. Like, you know, like, so once you get through Halloween, I mean, you just put a pillow in there and you can sleep on it too. Yeah, exactly. So maybe you'll be using that as a regular old pillow up until the real Halloween yeah. uh, in, in uh, October, but May 18th, circle, circle your calendars now, halfway to Halloween night at Smoky Stadium. It's going to be a fantastic night. Plenty of decorations. It'll be a costume contest. So wear your favorite Halloween costume to the ballpark at America's Friendliest Ballpark. We're going to have candy on site, passed out by plenty of our partners. And, of course, what kind of a night would it be without a fireworks spectacular at the conclusion of the game? Oh, yeah, yeah. So have you announced the entire um, schedule yet for giveaways and, and I mean, for uh, events? Or are, we, are you just kind of doing it like one every once in a while? So we have revealed a couple of our mainstays now. Okay. So we've announced when our Margaritaville night is going to be. We've when's announced that? When's, our, that? when's that? That's going to be on June 8th, of course. Oh, you wow. know, that's one of your favorite nights of the year. You know, uh, so much. That whole homestand is going to be epic. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just telling you guys that, too. You're going to you're probably going to be like, well, OK, I got to go back to Smoky Stadium again. Yeah. Uh, so. A little teaser on that. We will reveal what our Margaritaville night giveaway is going to be on next week's show. Oh, wow. So That's keep cool. an eye out on that. And that is going to be a great one. This is something that we've kind of hinted on a little bit in the past, but this is going to be a huge hit. Last season, if you came out to our Margaritaville night, we had the Sun Hat giveaway. And people loved this giveaway, dude. People were lined up like it was their favorite bobblehead giveaway. This right. was even bigger than that. You know, and our giveaway this upcoming season on Margaritaville night, I feel like is going to top it. Really? Man, so. we're going to give away live parrots. <laughs> <laughs> this a is petting zoo, right? Yeah, yeah, this is this is a special Margaritaville night because it's the first one since the great Jimmy Buffett died. And, and I got to tell you, you know, we, we were talking last episode about my trip to Key West. And, you know, my off season home is not too far from. Where when when Jimmy Buffett, Jimmy Buffett was from Pascagoula, Mississippi, then he moved to Mobile. And when he became like signed his first album and kind of became rich, he bought his parents a house in the same basically the same neighborhood I live in. And um, people here uh, here on the coast love him and they love him in Key West. I mean, there was like a mon uh, like a a. Uh, you know, a place where people just put stuff on the wall in his honor and stuff. And they, uh, it, it's crazy to think that he's not around anymore. So it'll be fun to remember Jimmy Buffett, just like we always do. But this year, obviously a little bit different just because we lost him. a lot different, really. Yeah. And last week uh, we lost uh, Toby Keith as wow. well. I big know. country music star, big uh, patriot, American, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, countless hits and you know he lost a battle with cancer so uh recipes to him thoughts and prayers going to his family and whatnot yeah uh, are you a country music guy so i am a country music guy you know i didn't grow up as a country music guy but when i moved down here to tennessee uh <laughs> country music is everywhere and i love it I, I really do i guess i never gave country music a chance in new jersey or in california so what was it what was the song that that kind of you know, brought you into it. Oh, wow. Just a country music you know, alone. Um, I was really the, like, what was the thing that where you were like, Oh man, this is, I'm in on this. Well, I guess you could say uh, one, one that's sticking out to me is, uh, drunk on a plane by Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a funny song and it's a great song to sing along to. Yeah. And you actually can understand all the words that he's singing. Right. And you know, You've been I, drunk hey, on a plane before? I, I admit it, I've been drunk on a plane before. Okay. You know? Uh, so I just love that song and I listen to all the other things that Dirk Bentley, uh, came out with big fan of his big fan of Jason Aldean and I've been hooked, you know, so I listen to country music in the, in the car all the time. That's a good song to get. You know, I, I always wonder, I mean, I grew up around <laughs> country music because um, my dad liked it so much. So I, I don't ever remember a world without it, but it's funny when people find it for the first time and they're like, man, I never thought that this stuff was good. And I feel like country music today is like yesterday's rock and roll. 
yeah. because we really don't have rock and roll anymore like we used to. Uh, and so that's what country music is to me. It's it's kind of like today's rock and roll. I mean, it's a little bit different. Uh, people might call it bro country, but I think it's just more rockish, you know. Um, and um, Riley Green is coming to the floor Bama and doing like two concerts on the beach there. Oh, I really like him. And I, I think we have home games. So, I ah, know. yeah, I will be at Smoky Stadium. But and, I, and I've heard it before. You know, people can make fun of me and say that, you know, I, I just listen to pop country. And today it's not the real country. Real country is singing sad songs and everything like that. But hey, you know what? I guess I'm not a true country music fan, but I love today's country. No, know? no, I don't think I have that nothing that sad to say about that. Yeah, no, I disagree with that. I think that. It's uh, I, I, I just think that country music is country music. I mean, you either like it or you don't. Right. And so um, I, I, I know there's a big debate, you know, and I'm an outlaw country guy. I mean, I, I met Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard and, um, you know, was backstage with them, got on Willie's bus. I mean, years ago, you know, and I and I, I love those guys. Hank Williams, Jr. And, you know, I can go down the list, but Johnny Paycheck met him, too. But I still like the Jason Aldeans and the Riley Greens and, you know, um, and those guys. I mean, I think that there's a place for all of them out there. But us being so close to Nashville and then, you know, Morgan Wallen's from around right. where, we're, you know, where our ballpark is. I mean, it's his home team and Luke Combs and uh, Kenny Chesney and Dolly. We're like we're immersed in it, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're surrounded by it and people love representing, you know, their favorite country music stars around here. A lot different than uh, me growing up in New Jersey. A lot of people were interested in rap or in hip hop and all of that. Uh, and on the West Coast, I feel like, you know, it's a little more good vibes and mm -hmm. you're listening to maybe like Sublime. And there's there's a lot of big like rock and roll out there, too, in addition to, uh, you know, the, the hip hop scene and everything like that. Yeah, but down here, you know, it's it's all country. So, yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you on that. Uh, and then, you know, last year we had the guy. Uh, what, what's the guy's name that had the song that became so popular? And then he was like, Oliver Anthony was here. Oliver Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was cool. We, we've had Skinner at the stadium. I think Willie's played at the stadium before. I mean, like it, there's been some pretty good acts. You said you were on Willie Nelson's bus before. Yeah. Yeah. Back in college. And how did that happen? So I was the marketing guy for Skull in Copenhagen. It was a company called U.S. Tobacco, and we sponsored these concert series. And, um, you know, I got to just kind of I, I do really what I wanted. Like I had backstage. and I mean, I'm talking about like backstage, like everybody knew who I was. I could just basically walk around the place. And so, uh, you know, his tour manager was a guy named Pooty and Pooty. Pooty, yeah, the great, the late great Pooty. What's, what's, I'll tell you a great story about Pooty. Pooty, when we were putting these concerts together, um, you know, Willie had toured for years and it was a big deal. And Pooty was, Willie's a really nice guy. I mean, he's exactly the way that you would imagine him, right? I mean, he's just laid back and, not a lot gets to him, but Pooty was the the guy who kind of made sure that people didn't try to take advantage of him, and you know that that what he needed got taken care of. You know, kind of his muscle, and and a veteran of uh, you know of being a tour manager. I mean, like a guy that had done it forever, and you know, uh, kind of a graspy you know graspy veteran type guy. You know, um, and so uh, Pooty and the guy, the promoter this guy named bull Corey, who was like kind of a Toby Keith type guy, you know, like country guy, really local. Um, and, and this is a town with one stoplight where these guys were coming to play and they, 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 they butted heads, let's put it like that. And we thought like that they were going to cancel the concert. Right. And oh. long story short, like the concert goes off and Pootie ends up loving everybody in town. And, you know, he they're like, hey, we're used to dealing with like city slickers and, you know, and, and these big time concert promoters. And, and and this is what Willie loves, like just 
down to earth, normal people. And, um, and then after that, Pootie would just anywhere Willie was, he just, Hey, send him a text and you get free tickets. I mean, you know, I've seen him probably mm. like eight times or nine times, um, in, in concert and love him. And I, and I thought about going again because he's still out touring in his nineties, right? He just had his 90th birthday. So, so during COVID they shut everything down. We didn't have a season and you guys know I'm a huge deadhead and I'm listening to the dead station during COVID. And this guy who was a roadie for the dead has a show on there called the big Steve hour on XM. And he starts talking about Pootie lock. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, man. There can't be many people on that are on XM right now going, I know Pootie, you know, you know, who's passed away now, but I remember Pootie and it was just cool kind of hearing the stories about Willie Nelson and the grateful dead touring together. And right. what, what was interesting to me is like, we have our grateful dead night and it's one of our most popular nights now, which I'm so proud of that just as someone that begged to do it. And you know this, and I didn't know if we were going to have anybody show up or not. I mean, I thought we would. Uh, but there's a real, you know, I, I was worried about you were it. so stressed on that first yeah, time we brought it back. But I looked I over and I saw everybody come and I was like, Oh my gosh. But, um, the dead are, they're like, they're, there's, re they're really not a genre. Maybe they, they call it jam rock, but it's like blues and country and country and Western and, you know, and rock and all this stuff molded together. And, and when some of their early, albums you know like or you know in songs were like very country and western songs right i mean i could put a whole set list together and when you take those songs like it, you put that that version of the, of the dead in, and, and as like life went on like they they kind of went from that version more into the you know the 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 jammy version which i love that too but songs like el paso and friend of the devil and stuff like that, like uh, Uncle John's band, like they, all these songs that they they did at the beginning. You could put a whole like, you know, uh, set together, and then if you put that with Willie's stuff, like Whiskey River, and Red Haired Stranger, and I mean, you could put together in an, an incredible like 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 kind of like this country and western, you know, folksy performance. performance. Yeah. yeah, man. And I mean, I, I, so I could totally see those, those guys going together, um, and a tour, but until I heard that, I'd never thought of that. Wow. I mean, that sounds like a good time. You know, the, you know, you're definitely part of history right there and shout out Pootie. Shoot. Yeah. Shout Pootie out Pootie. <laughs> um, yeah. So that uh, small world stuff though. And I think that like being in that, doing that job and then doing what we do now, like a lot of the lessons that I learned, you know, from promoting those concerts and, um, and, and doing the behind the scenes stuff and the legwork, it, it's a lot of the same stuff that we do in baseball. Um, it, it's just different now. I mean, like back then it was like newspaper and radio and TV, you know, now it's like digital stuff like this matters. Like uh, grassroots is always big. Um, and, and that's a world that you deal with all the time. Oh yeah. I mean, you gotta get every single base covered, no pun intended when it comes to, there's so many different forms of ingestion of media, you know, back in the day used to be just newspapers and magazines. Right. And mm -hmm. those two forms, though, they're not as big, they still exist today. And it's not just new newspapers and magazines. Those are both publications that are online on the internet. And then, you know, listening to music is something that used to be where you had to go and hear it live, you know, and then obviously it's transformed from a track CDs, records, whatever you may be. Now you can listen to any song that you want on your cell phone, wherever you are in the world. Oh, man. So, and that's not even including, you know, our friends with television and radio. Yeah, man. You have, to have all these things covered. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's exactly it, man. I mean, you, and, and it, it's constantly changing too. Um, you know, just basically trying to get the word out, like, Hey, come to the ballpark and, and, and check out, you know, this pillow giveaway or, you know, or something else that we're doing, the pennant giveaway or, you know, Margaritaville night. Uh, I, I'll tell you, like, it, it's crazy when I think about the Margaritaville night. And I, I know I've said this before on here, but it's been going on before I even got there. 
Right. Which, I mean, at this point, you know, that's saying something within itself, right? <laughs> and that's saying something about this community as well. I worked for two different minor league teams prior to coming to the Tennessee Smokies, uh, one in northern New Jersey and then one of them in Southern California. And we did not do a Margaritaville night. We didn't even do like a Hawaiian-themed night. Right. Uh, and I came in here and I learned about, oh, what are the staples? What are people looking forward to every single season? And Margaritaville night, University of Tennessee night. Those are the ones that everyone's like, this is what we have circled on our calendars. We're coming to the ballpark for these nights here in East Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, good to know. There was a time when one of the band members from the Coral Reefer band would come and join the band that we had playing uh, for Margaritaville night. And I, I forget who it was, you know, and it's funny because uh, when Jimmy Buffett died, I, I, I would listen to their XM station a lot and they'd play the old concerts. And I've heard these songs so many times now in my life that, you know, you, you just listen to the, the concerts because it's the same song, but it's different, you know? Mm -hmm. And he would introduce the band. And I always wondered, like, I wonder what the guy's name was, who was the, and what is the Coral Reefer band doing now? I mean, are they still, you know, do they still play. I mean, I know Mac Mac McAnally, who was part of his band tours, and I'm sure Mike probably does. You know, they probably have a podcast. Yeah, they probably do a podcast. Sad, That's sad, but we'll we'll be doing that. Um, you say June eighth? June eighth. Circle it on your calendar. Saturday, June eighth, Margaritaville night at Smoky Stadium. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, last week, I I got tickets for Dead and Company in Las Vegas at the Spear. Oh, oh, oh wow and, and i it was like it was so intense you know you, you you get in line for these tickets and uh tim volk our general manager said it was just like taylor swift tickets like you know like it was just thousands of people trying to get tickets so the first the first tickets that i got i made a mistake and i picked the wrong day and i just bought them and then i realized like it wasn't july 7th or 6th or 11th or whatever it was going to be it was June. So now I got, uh, I got two tickets for June 7th. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I guess I'll be selling these. Cause then I ended up getting them for July. But um, I thought of all the, the weeks and the, the weekends in June, like there is no way I'm missing any of these dates. You know, like these are the best, this is like the, <laughs> the, these are the best times of the season, you know, to get in there for, for me anyway, uh, that weekend. And then, some of you guys are like, well, I like UT night, which I'm sure we'll do that again. And, you know, it's there's so many staples to the promotional schedule. And there's a lot of things. And, you know, we are fully loaded, jam packed. If you're coming to the ballpark on a Friday or a Saturday, you're going to have the opportunity to take part in a lot of great theme nights. If you're coming to the ballpark on Sundays, a lot of those have giveaways tied to them. And as we stated before, at the beginning of the season, we're celebrating our championship. And at the conclusion of the season, we are celebrating Smoky Stadium and 25 great seasons here uh, in Kodak. So be on the lookout, always be on the lookout for us at Smokies Baseball on all of our social media platforms or at SmokiesBaseball.com. Keep up with all the latest. Next month in March, our single game tickets will be going on sale. And, of course, our promotional schedule will be released. But we've been hinting here and there with about a couple of our theme nights here. We know that Star Wars night is May 4th. We know that our Margaritaville night is on June 8th. We know that Christmas in July is on July 20th. Nice. So be on the lookout. We're doing these drops very, very often on our social media platforms. And just as you heard today for the first time, our Halfway to Halloween night will be on uh, May 18th, featuring our pillowcase giveaway to the first 500 children in attendance. Sweet, 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 sweet. That's going to be sweet. fun. I see what you did there, Halloween, you know. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, man, so everything's kind of lining up promotions-wise, and uh, we, you know, we kind of got into that. The team's... Uh, you know, that's something that we're going to start kind of getting an eye because, you know, spring training uh, for the, you know, the minor leaguer starts later than the big league spring training. But the Smokies should have a very talented team this year. I'm guessing that Kevin Alcantara 
will be on the team. I can't imagine him not. Moises Ballesteros. I mean, they're going to have like some of the top prospects coming back that helped at the end of last season. Uh, you know, obviously uh, the new manager. Uh, Lance Rom, he, he used to play for the Smokies, didn't he, back in the day? Yeah, yeah. So that's I mean, kind of a little homecoming yeah, for him. Yep, yep. Uh, yep, great name too. Great baseball name, Rymold. Um, so yeah, I mean, some pretty cool, pretty cool stuff going on. Um, you know, at with everything at the stadium, and and you know, we've had a couple of really nice days. Uh, and and, I, and as soon as we say that, it gets cold again. But um, but it gives you that feel. And um, we got some new staff members that have joined the Smokies, and we lost one, Caleb. So did Caleb win the fantasy football league and then take off for John? Caleb won the fantasy football league and decided I'm too good for Kodak. I'm going to Kingsport. So, so he went to Kingsport. So. New general manager for the Kingsport Axemen, one him. of the teams in the Boyd Sports group. So congratulations to him. And, you know, my interns are all in here. Shout out to uh, – Lindsay, Joe, David, and Alyssa, thanks so much for joining the uh, Smokies team here for the upcoming season. This is going to be the best season yet. I can guarantee you on that. It's going to be chock full of fun and great memories. We're putting together, you know, memories that last a lifetime here. And hey, at the end of the day, it's a nine inning vacation for yeah. all of those that come out to the ballpark here. I've been saying that. Have you had a chance to look at the new stadium that's being built? Because it looks like yeah. those guys are ahead of schedule. Oh, yes, yes. Just this past Monday, actually, uh, took a tour of the new ballpark, and it's getting pretty exciting. Uh, check it out on our Facebook page about a couple photos that we uh, uploaded there and some videos. You know, we're up where the press box would be located. There's actual beams. There's floors being made now at the new ballpark. Things are really taking a turn for the positive here. And just what we talked about with the good weather, that means that things are going ahead of schedule. Uh, back in January, there was a week straight where it was just snow and there was nine inches of snow and ice on the ground and the whole city was shut down. It's crazy. Haven't had that much snow and ice in 20 years. So that delayed things for a bit. Hopefully they got some paperwork done and some other things that you could do inside without actually digging and whatnot. Uh, but things are moving according to plan and people are getting excited about the new ballpark. But we still have one more great year here uh, in Kodak and Smokey Stadium. Yeah. Did you get out in that weather? Ha, uh, a little bit. You know, uh, I drive a Dodge Charger and uh, it doesn't come with a four wheel drive. And I didn't want <laughs> to take a risk going down a fully. Uh, it kind of looked like a sled, to be honest, the street I live on. It was just a big old ice patch all the way down uh so my fiance she drives uh toyota highland or four-wheel drive and all that so it felt like i was in one of the commercials going off-roading with her nice. slipping and sliding down uh the slide which is pepperdine way which we live on so oh, nice and pepperdine <laughs> of course the city out a uh, college out in california but obviously yeah. not uh that day when it was uh so snowy and cold well, cool, man. Anything else that you want to add? I feel like we've uh, we've kind of hit it all right now. Sounds like a really efficient, uh, uh, you know, uh, podcast we had this week. To be honest, we covered a lot of things. Once again, be on the lookout for our five K. Sign up today, smokiesbaseball.com slash five K. Sign up today for the five K or the one mile fun run. Uh, you're going to get a personalized bat if you finish in the top three. Our top three male and female finishers get an, an actual engraved baseball bat as a trophy. So that's kind of fun. So hopefully you've been training for that. You ever did a 5k before? Yeah. I did the Smokies 5k. So this one's on March 30th. Yes. Mm -hmm. so early this year, early this year in tying in with our fan fest. So sign up today and join us next week where we're going to announce another giveaway coming to Smokey stadium. You definitely don't want to miss that one. Awesome. Well, let's do it again soon. And uh, we appreciate all of you guys hanging out with us. For Eris, I'm Mick. Make sure that you guys get in the comment section, like, and subscribe, and go Smokies. <laughs>